Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Evolve. Uh, today we'll be talking about mental health and how it affects people living with disability and how they're able to cope with it. So joining us in the conversation today is Ramsey Duvel. Ramsey Duvel is the founder of Misunderstood and he's also he also does photography and branding. So Duvel, welcome to the conversation today. Thank you, thank you. Yes, let me allow you to introduce yourself. So my name is Ramsey and yeah, I'm a photographer and got 30 years old. I'm a photographer and I also create awareness about epilepsy. Nikona project yangu inaitwa The Misunderstood. Basically The Misunderstood is a project about creating awareness about epilepsy and people living with epilepsy beyond just just people living with other disability beyond you know the comfort I'm a, what we know is disability like let's say in my case I'm a photographer and despite the fact that photographer yeah. triggers me and such so we are focusing more on the success stories rather than the victim who avoid epilepsy or this condition cause. So, the, so that people are nearer, who inspired and all that. That yeah. despite your condition, yako, you can still be a success. You can still go ahead and change the world and all that. So that is the whole concept of misunderstood. And then, you know, lazima ni lead by example. So I have also a company, uh, Radiant Type Pictures. We have a team. Uh, to na focus na branding, photography, na production. So yeah. I love that. I love that. So when did you first notice that you have epilepsy? Or rather, what is epilepsy? Because there's someone who doesn't even understand what epilepsy is. It's tricky to explain, uh, like medically, but let me put it in the Lay simplest long, way. Yeah. Epilepsy basically ni condition in here. Uh, in a suburbation, uh, it can be caused by different things. Mm-hmm. No, no. But basically, epilepsy, the way I normally call it, is short circuit and it happened in the brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be caused by, let's say, an accident and then in a damaged brain. Basically, any activity no, no, that can cause uh, brain damage mm-hmm. in as a cause epilepsy, it does not guarantee that it will cause. But there is a chance whenever you're involved in anything that can affect the brain, mm-hmm. it will lead to epilepsy. However, there are cases like it's genetic. No, no. So that's a different case. So if it's genetic, most likely, like in my case, most likely you end up patikana, your brain is fine. I could damage, I could anything, but yes, in Onyesha, you have epilepsy. So like, it's not like it just because you may go on a gari, you can go on a kichwa, it is a epilepsy. And even in some cases, a partner like Mtoya Mezaliwa, they are still young, depending on the way your delivery is in in affect epilepsy. Actually, if I'm not wrong, like I read somewhere, don't quote me on this, but 70% of cases the epilepsy could be avoided. Ah, be it because you have epilepsy because of an accident, the way you are born, maybe because your hospital is in Kwambaya, nini, nini. So, yeah. So basically, that is that is it. And on your case, what caused it? Sorry. In your case, what what triggered it? Uh, I come from a family side. Yeah, kina maade. There are cases at least three to four generations. There are cases of uh, people living with epilepsy. So in my case, it's genetic. So it's not something that we say, say this is what caused it. So like, yeah, uh, I like to think it's because of that. At least based on the evidence. Because I did MRI and my brain is perfect. No, no. But when they do EEGs, basically to monitor those electric currents in the brain, it shows that uh, I have seizures. No. So like in my case, I like to think it's because your know, history now in our mother's side of epilepsy. So when did you first realize, Ama, when did it first happen? Do you realize you have it? Uh, was six or seven. I think I was seven years old. And though my dear Ananiambianga, Ananiambianga, I was born with it. No, no. But for me, my experience, Nakubuka, from the age of six, six or seven, uh, it was just a typical day. I'll never forget. Then my eye, my left eye started twitching. 
and then from there whatever happened hapo katikati i cannot remember no no but all i remember is that suddenly my parents were kakuwa concerned no no you could see that fear and yeah you come from a family of how many <laughs> we come from a very very big family mm. i can count 10 to 14 hapo hivi no oh and before i even forget uh so at the age of 7 after you experience ya epilepsy that's just about between the period where my biological father and my mom separated so like at that time as a kid because as a kid you you are very primitive the way you think so the way i interpreted that that maybe i could be one of the reason why my father left my biological father left so i grew up uh stabbed of father's love until i think i was formed to that is when when my mom remarried and i experienced fatherly love which it's not as simple as i put it because this was a new territory that i found myself in you get because uh if i may go back kidogo you know abusive father akaacha watu hii sisi akatu neglect threatening my mom and all that because i'm I, i'm just grateful that my mom was very quick to react because the moment i was threatened she packed and then akatupeleka in, so it had not been happening it happened the first time and she left the first time she was threatened I'm on Oliza. So abuse had been ongoing. Yes, abuse ilikuwa imeendelea. Mm-hmm. Unaona? Mm-hmm. And mimi venye nilipata hizo attacks, mm-hmm. unaona? That's why. Kaanza kujiblame. Yes, nikaanza yeah. kujiblame and then because my father left, unaona? Mm-hmm. And even this something that I told my mom, I was introduced into adulthood at a very Adult. very tender age, unaona? Because yes, I'm second born, but back then huko western ni mimi na brother yangu mdogo tulikuwa so i had to take that role inaenda unaachiwa watu hii madai kiwa job and everything so she so tried to separate yes. wapi mlienda wapi uh, the first thing she did my mom alienda akatafuta job and she got job and then i can move to the town center if i may call it whereby she tried as much as possible to kuwa na access ya life ya watu hii kawaida like you know at least in whatever capacity she could afford so to come move to town center and then still the threats zilikuwa zinakuja you know back then ilikuwa inakuja in form of letters ah like nitakuja nitakushoot nini 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 mm, and atawa shoot he had a gun he he, he was a nini he was a cop by mm, profession okay. ah so like all that and then one day it's just that sasa my mom ilimfika hapa unaona mm-hmm. so akaenda katupeleka kwao also that means you're dealing with identity crisis because back in your home you don't feel like you belong and then unaenda huku and they remind you that kwenu ni huko and then you're wondering where do i belong and you grow with this identity crisis and even as an adult inakuja every time you feel like yeah it's like it gives birth to an imposter syndrome no you don't feel like you belong somewhere no matter how good you are at something no you just feel like you are not that good enough no and my biological father was a master at making you feel like you're not good enough ah uh, like when you nimekuambia ah uh, back then tukiongea i was pretty much a very bright kid no So like in, in high school I'll get as 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 in everything and then mathematics na letter B plus. Uh, and he really know the rest and I focus kwa B plus and then at an elector niambie wewe hauna ile akili ya kuzaliwa wewe uko na akili ya kupatiwa. So that disapproval no you have to find a way of dealing with it and at that particular time you don't know what you are doing until you are adult and then you are real you start realizing you're fighting battles that they were not even yours to begin with they were not yours you never created these so you are fighting battles as a result of the environment that you are raised in so for me that is the role that i can say 
majorly my father played and my biological father if so I may say so you here you guys have separated the, your parents have separated my pelekwa ushago you 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 realize you have epilepsy so shule what happened so number 1 uh tukaenda uko kwa kina nini kwa kina mabe and first of all because sisi ni strangers hata before nifike hiyo story ya shule truth be told and i know they will not going to appreciate me saying it they never accepted us holy nona as part of their families is a matter of fact we used to be used kama how do i call it hardsmen tunaenda kuchunga ngombe na mbuzi like and that's one thing that my mom never liked nona so like you find that that and then sasa tukaenda shule suddenly dramatically my performance it can drop no no because emotionally you are dealing you know you have to remember i'm still a kid i'm not an adult you get so you are fighting these things and like i told you because you were introduced to adulthood at a very tender age even your thought process is trying to act as an adult when you're still a kid so going to school unaenda and you still feel like that love haiko because remember your father is abusive and then unaenda to an environment that is very toxic and you are like kwani nilikosea wapi unaona so as a result of that kwenda shule suddenly ikaanza kuwa number last unaona from from a kid when ali kwanga at least akiwa me fail number 3 unaona suddenly nimeenda and is not that that the kids who got they were smarter than me no 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 so like hiyo as a result it when a lead to underperform and then like there's this story i've told a million times where oh we failed the assignment and then the head teacher anakuja kichapa kila mtu and then mimi one of the triggers niyo kushtuka ah so nikashtuka and then it was the first time even the teacher knew the teacher knew that niko na epilepsy and not necessarily at that particular because when when you get an attack immediately you're not thinking at is it because my parent actually all you're thinking is when it's about if there's something we call auras auras is basically those signs excuse those signs that tell you I'm about to come so put your house in order no no so like not everyone has con epilepsy has con auras we normally call it a blessing in this guys for people living with epilepsy because you can tell when they are about to come and you put your house in order come if this is the case i lay down so not every person utasema at you have time you could think is it because of the toxic ama nini all you know you're like oh my god it not happen so easy no no so attack inakuja so after imekuja because like i told you in my case these attacks manifest differently no no in my case kuna hizo i have my clonic jacks where i my body just twitch and involuntary no ah, i can just start going like this i don't control my movements and then kuna hizo grand mal seizures general grand mal seizures these are the ones that are famous hii yenye oh akona kifafa nini nini na anguka chini and then i start jacking jacking without then eyes na roll I'll, i'll show you a video and then you feel like you're not breathing no uh, that's why i kwambia you feel like you're stuck in the powerless no uh, and what happens during the myclonic jacks is that i'm here with you i'm aware where i am i know what is happening i can touch this glass no no but like i have no control over anything no no like he glass nikishika even taitupa i can easily slap you because see mimi na ni it's like your body mekuwa possessed no so that's why i can tell you like in school so you say mati you attack nilipata because your toxic environment 
but yes these roles they normally kuna build up no na oh your environment toxic na nini mpaka hapo but at that particular time all i know is that in list to liwa and that you can trigger and that's why i got the attack everyone at least took what you can you go by including teachers uh it's laughable because because at that particular age i've developed a survival mechanism so which means i'm going to capitalize in everything no mm. that in akuja that may look to favor me so i started but kukua stigmatized no and you find that even someone who was your best friend anakuona anatema mate these and these like basically like I'm, like i always say different eventually scares people so suddenly students are notice he's different from us oh amelaniwa oh nini nini okay back then kulikuwa na hizo myths about epilepsy oh simsalimie utashikwa sijui nini nini and all that so you find that you are isolated and like i told you earlier when you are isolated you become that guy at the corner no no and when you become that guy at the corner you are very aware of your environment no and you see what is happening you see what is happening nani anapenda nani and then so for me that was the case and i started using that as my weapon you could defend psychoanalysis you you analyze your environment basically what i've done with you before yes before to kuje to answer you shoot so like i used to need you so i'll go for example ah uh, tutapatiwa homework especially your english teacher i used to take advantage of that i won't lie because i know he's scared ah uh, because suddenly news is may spread this one can die can die in your hands no uh, so the teachers are afraid to punish you they don't know what to do with you so why not take advantage of it so na enda home me party assignment then na come na mwambia you know teacher there is a way jana siko na feel and you know uko na ulikuwa sawa and the teacher is be like okay we understand nini nini or when the kids wanaenda kulikuko ocha mlikuwa mnaenda hiyo cross country you are like no this one which okay that one was not a lie like my body can only take as much fatigue when you pull you when you push that body to a certain extent in a trigger seizures mm. so it was both mix of good and bad but later i came to pay the price for being corny mm. with the teachers i will not lie i repeated the class mm. and then my mom went to the school pleading with the head teacher sum sukume mbele nin nin and head teacher ka akasema zi this kid is not stupid no no he's very bright actually and I'm not going to push him forward. When I repeated that class Benjamin nakwambia my lucky number is 7. Nika repeat class 5. I became number 7. Naona. So kwenda. So like that was my target. So like you find that ikaanza kuwa target yangu if you fail kwa number 7. No. So like that's how my number 7 become my favorite because like I told you birthday 7th index number 7th your high school primary index number 7 so because we adapt to your environment now i'm like you do whatever because i also when kitu yenye sijasema kwa sababu i'm not always proud that friend of mine that alikuwa ananiona anatema mate i pinned him on the wall and i told him don't you ever do that again ama this was a lot of anger that yes, had built up even as an adult why it not for say for the the nini the therapy nini classes that have been going not classes sessions like that anger it came accumulating me it was so bad actually that as my biological father as an adult whenever he'll try to communicate with me atatumia sister yake unaona because the sight of him alone to me was a trigger that is that is how because what, what did he represent everything that and this is something i'm writing and i'm going to give you the pleasure of kuisikia mara ya kwanza just a line every time i looked at him or every time i looked 
at myself, I saw a reflection of everything that I abode in myself. No, no. Like, you look at him and you find out that the things you are dealing with, you're not supposed to be dealing with. Why? Because I could play role yake kama father. You see? So, I used to look at him maybe and I get an attack. Or him talking, I get an attack. And when he realized that, nakaanza kutumia sister yake my aunt. And how did you deal with it? Ili we overcome? Therapy. Yes, therapy sessions ili saidia sana. How is that relationship now? We talk. I actually let go. No, no. Like my therapist will say, back then you were a child. No, no. How could you have a choice? But right now you have a choice. And it just reached a point whereby I'm tired of carrying this because you will feel like something heavy me kukalia. And I was just too tired of it. And I even sat with him down. I sat him down rather. Nika muambia, this, you did this and this and this and this and I did not appreciate it. I even told my, my mom, Nana, it is known, it is in the constitution, it's a scientific fact. Don't ever expect an apology from an African parent. <laughs> it, you know, yeah. They can be wrong, yeah. they can be wrong, yeah. but you should never go and expect an apology. Kalipita pita hivi, but I understood him. Yes, I'm the kind of person like, because nilikuwa naambiwa forgive. No. Like, wao kinikosea saa hizi. And then, let's say for example, the videographer kuja niambie, why don't you just forgive her? No. I'm not the kind mwenye ndasema, okay, I've forgiven her. Not until nimekukalisha chini ni mwongia na kenye kilikuwa kwa hati yangu. So, that's how when. And before that, I came to realize that hata mimi nilikuwa nimeanza ku create toxic traits where if you hurt me or in one way or another and you ask for forgiveness even if you mean, you mean it i'm going to make sure that you're going to experience the same experience if not worse yeah they say hurt people hurt people yes and it's so important to exactly. hear exactly so now you you've moved was he supporting you so then you, now you in the other school Nope. There was no support. Not, not, not at all. My mom was jua. doing everything. My mom. My mom used to make sure, apart from medication, I remember I was in Nairobi. Huku, sasa, I was most of the time in Nairobi. I was in Nairobi. Every week, I was on Tuesday. I was in Kitambo. I was in Nairobi. I was in Nairobi. I was in Nairobi. I was in Nairobi. And then, anapiga simu anasema dawa zako zimeenda kwa fulani ndio uchukue dasa zilikuwa zinafika school fees everything it was her and now you've said you come from a family of 14 yes how did that happen ama when my mom remarried when my mom remarried uh, tulikuwa watano from your biological dad your five yes okay we are five mm-hmm. And then my stepdad alikuwa na watu wawili. Not six, seven. Seven. Oh, five, no. two, seven, sorry. Seven. Mm. Ah, yeah. There's a cousin of mine anaitwa Rina. No, no. That is eight. No. Rina is from which side? From your mom's side? Yes. Okay. And there's Rina kwa na watoto wawili. No, no. That 11. comes 10. 10. Okay. Is it 10 or 11? 11. <laughs> okay. And then God aka bless uh, my current dad and my mom with a set of twins. No, no. So like yeah, number in kuja 13. Yeah. So like They come from a big family. It's a very big family. How is that? Cuz now there's now the element of a blended family. Yes. Let me take back to when I was in form 2 in Nyasasa 
niliko introduced to that yeah no mm. you are not used first of all this is new to you yeah no mm. there was so much love from you from the extended family this is a new phenomena for me you know na from because you're from being rejected yes you are used to toxicity you are used to you know like god yako iko pale ju and then here you meet these people no na it's like <laughs> it's like a church umeenda kwa church nao ni watu wote wanaishi kwa nyumba then they are laughing they are sharing experiences so it took me some time my brother my small brother and I to get used to that environment especially for me i did not want to let my god down especially because my stepdad my stepdad is a cop no no my biological father was a cop so i was like i don't want to keep my hopes high don't want to be emotionally invested in this ikuja yenda up kama ile no no so like i was just preparing myself for in case of any eventuality i'll be like well yeah. at least i knew that will come mm. ah. yes and pia hiyo ikakuja ikakuwa habit yangu even as an adult and in a way you become like a prophet of doom on your own destiny no no because even with you i like i'll create this mask yeah. no no and then you get you accept this mask that it may present kwako and you know when you're not yourself around people you get tired eventually of pretending someone you are not and already where well, ushani accept based on whatever you can presented so when i'm presenting this side of me you start feeling like i'm changing let's put it in a relationship context you're like this is not the man i fell in love with no no so like that was a way of protecting myself because walls zangu zilikuwa uko juu yes and i'll give you one day this is how bad it was one day i met this girl i liked her nora and she was like i don't think you are compatible no no just the way a guy can be interested in you and you just i don't think we can work out we just different and i was like so nanikata ju niko na epilepsy and for a moment she was like wait wait, wait what uko na epilepsy yeah no no mm-hmm. she didn't even know yes see kwa nimeshare but no, no. you've always had it like people reject you yes. because you have this so thing. she was mad at me because i had accused her of something that to begin with siko hata nimemwambia no no so like that so you're putting the mask of a normal person not that you're not normal but uliko na put yeah. mask that you don't have epilepsy actually let's put because that epilepsy represent your shame that you have it yes and Or, that's one thing natakanga kuambia wasenga na live with epilepsy not even epilepsy any condition even you yeah you're not normal mm. no no yeah. we all have something yes and the more you pursue this idea of normalcy you end up getting disappointed or you end up not achieving your potential why because you want let's let's go na kenya society may set standard as something that is normal no no asubuhi kifika wake up no no wake up and a job so even if you don't have anything to do at 7 if you don't wake up at 7 you're lazy or whatever ni ni you see what about ule msemo nya na work night shift mm. no no yeah. so for me i like telling people living with epilepsy that the sooner you accept the fact that you are not like the people the other people who have epilepsy just accept that you are going to scare people uh, even i got scared the first time i saw someone getting an attack tulikuwa hiyo youth on the move tunaenda boreta because tulikuwa tunaenda hizo team building at the end man then i see someone getting an attack and i got scared and i was like okay so this is how it feels and that gets you an understanding no no of the other the way that how is world. someone supposed to how is someone supposed to handle someone when they are going through an episode of epilepsy at that particular time so number one in a depend again it's very important to emphasize there are different form of seizures and not every seizure is an epileptic seizure 
Nona. There are others that are not even affiliated with epilepsy to begin with. And even epilepsy, epilepsy, they are different form of epilepsy, which means they have different manifestation, which means they need to be attended in terms of a state differently. But the form, the common one, ni he grand mal seizures ye nyo nanguka, nona. Which number one, unambiangwa, you calm down. No, no, you when you're on a yeah. first aid. You are allowed to be scared. It's yeah. that is natural. Yeah. But calm down. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Number two, nambiwa angalia environment in yako. I normally say common sense. Ninini nezam heart. In this case, this, this, remove them. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Number three, if anything, you gonna tight clothing and button and something like that. Number four, protect my head. No, no. Mm. Protect my head with something soft mm. because nanda nikininia. And this number five, this is one of the most things that I'm very sure you had, but never ever do it. I'm very sure ushaisikia mweke kijiko kwa mdomo asijume. You should never do that. It is written in capital letters. Mm. Do not put anything in that person's mouth. Mm. No, no. Mm. Because first of all, mm. una limit oxygen in naingia mm. because we say sa hizo hapumi hata na mapua. Mm. Ah. Mm. So you're most likely to do more harm than good. Mm. Or let's pretend, let me this is a scenario I like using. Niko na wewe shoot a boreta, mm. then I get an attack. Mm. I hate to believe una bebanga vijiko kwa pass everywhere you go. Mm. So what you're going to do? You're going to look around utafute kijiti. Mm. No na uweke. Hiyo kijiti iko na mchanga, patiko za mchanga zipite ama kijiti nyume vunjike now are you begin to see no mm. so do not put anything kwa mdomo wait do not try to contain my movement it unanishika hivi ama nini just wait until the seizure zimeisha mm. then the moment seizure zimeisha there's what we call recovery position that one because siwezi kuonyesha hapa we'll have to go and look but just to give you a rough idea is this when you unalalanga kukiona baridi No, no. Hii mkono moja umelalia hivi there's a way unaeka igoti so that inamzuia na yengine iko straight yeah. so that haizi roll like roll hivi igoti na brudisha hiyo position yeah. so that one you'll have to go and look in form of pictures so that's how you attend yeah. your first aid so I want to go back thank you for that i think that was so informative i want to go back to the blended family because i think it's so important and yeah. so many families are going through it yeah so sasa now how did Like now you brought into this family. Yes. Ama how were you introduced and how was the relationship with that dad with your now adopted dad and how did he make you feel? you're saying he he made you feel like you have a father figure. Yes. How did he do that? Number one, because bado tulikuwa tunaka at my aunt's umoja aliambia mabe bring those kids here. No no excuse so those two my brother and I how wengine walikuwa wote already wako huko so tukaenda and then you are like what is happening because that is the first thing unafika kwa hiyo environment you are like okay there is a lot happening hata ujui wanzie wapi and of course it takes time to used to calling someone else dad you get mm. and but they were what i like um, what i liked about him eventually mm. and these are the things that they are easy to underestimate you know when you grow one of the things that will grow ni ki fight ni you reach a certain age and your body starts changing as a, as unaanza una transition to a man mm. puberty And now you know these things you cannot share with your mom. No one no one tells you at you should know but you know this one because una fika age you're like this one I cannot share with my mom. So you go and figure it out you lay and you're misled even you lay. No one. So having that father figure of who guide through life. No one. Or you see na kachik mali ukiwa shule you have a crush. Just someone just to have this conversation so my dad right now what he did was because alikuwa railway station no 
was also a cop. Yes, he was a cop. Mm-hmm. That's when yeah. 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 like my guard was always up because mm-hmm. I think my mom had a thing for uniform. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so like what one of the things I'm not I'm sure he's not aware that I used to like he used to tell me Nimpeleke police station nona so we would walk from where we are and we are having this man to man conversation and then this man man to conversation slowly slowly transitions to father to son nona you're like you're going to find a girl you're going to marry and when you marry these are the things you'll expect whenever she behaves this way this is how you handle it uh, and then we laugh about it and say sometimes you'll call her crazy and all that so all that those are things no no and you realize you don't realize you'll call me miss until they are happening no and the flip side of that is that i ended up overstaying my welcome and it's not that i was being chased I ended up overstaying my welcome at my mother's place because at the age of 26 27 you're still at your mother's place because you're craving no no of course there's the factor that you got an epilepsy and I was afraid I was afraid of trying life alone keeping in mind that I had lost four four people through epilepsy they were very different so that did not help either but the major reason other than the epilepsy factor was I wanted more of this love. No, no. I actually ended up renting a place, paying, and I'm not living there. Bado Nico, kwa madhe. Because of your adopted dad. Not necessarily and just, love yes, of the, the whole family idea and of the family who there. Yeah. And you see, all of you, it's not that you have, it, you're wealthy, you're manini. Anyway, you know in Kamiya Police. No, no. but you see through the good and bad times that unity like yes there can be quarrel and disagreement and then by day everything is settled no no so like it used i ended up falling in love with that and it was difficult for me to move past that no, no. even sometimes i go back there just that now after the past few weeks me kwa raf kwa ngo so is attack so i had to shift there uh, but yeah that is basically i forgot to ask you something when your parents divorced did you blame your mom did you regret them divorcing or did you think your mom made a good decision with the divorce oh good decision good decision and i'm not talking this Like I even told my mom the other day, no. And I was asking how old was I? Because if I told my biological father at a sema, that is a seed my mother planted, which is not the truth. I remember the first time nilimona kichapa made, no. And I can this when I described to my mom, no, because he was bare chested. Uh, alikuwa amevaa track suit ya blue ilikuwa na stripes za white baada alikuwa amevaa dress ya cream then ilikuwa na two bags of chocolate na alikuwa amebeba brother yangu mdogo the one that i actually think you know him plug tv we work with him together no so like that was the first time so i asked my mom how old was i akaniambia you were three. no so that was the first time niliona akinini and then when i when alikuwa akiandika hizi letters za kitumia made naona i will sneak and kwenda because you see your mom crying you want to know what is happening yeah. so i'll sneak and kwenda kuona na kuona hizo barua i'll read them and i can see him threatening you can, he can deny all he wants but i saw the evidence ndakuja ndakushoot ndakupiga risasi and all that So it's safe to say that children they don't necessarily at a crave for you to stay in an abusive relationship they'll rather see you happy and them feeling safe rather than you being in that relationship I'll, and it's so abusive I'll give you an example and I'm very sure mothers out there are never relate if you are married 
and then you've quarreled with your husband na mkona watoi wadogo yeah watoi ulia pia unaona it's like you know kids can sense the energy no mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so that is why mtoi like hata kama ajaanza kuona vizuri ukimpatia mtu mwenye si mama yake they can tell yeah. unaona mm-hmm. so as a kid and remember when you were introduced to adulthood mm-hmm. at a very tender age mm-hmm. no you're like i'm very aware of what is happening so for me i was like yeah you you were happy she made that decision yes and that is why like going uko at uh, uko kwao in as much as the environment was mm-hmm. not as the way i would have liked mm-hmm. it was better mm-hmm. kuliko kind of yes. relationship and, and she, now, for the so, first time she had the freedom Sure. Yes, she never she was a prisoner. Like she got married and my father was those traditional men, Klesia Bibi, Nhi Nhi and my mom ni mtu mwenye very adventurous apendangi kukama ali moja. Unaona? She's a hustler. That is why like she could find anything alafu anatutumia mimi kama to take care of us and everything she actually took so much care of us in terms of when she found a job yeah. like i don't think you remember there was those viatu zilikuwa zinaitwa hanson yeah. zilitokeanga hivi na ulikuwa ukiwa na hizo viatu wewe ndio kusema unaona yeah. yeah. so he'll buy she'll buy those to my elder brother nini nini remember back then when sharing is caring ilianza so kiatu inatoka huku mpaka huku yeah. but So yeah uh for me I was happy they separated unaona mm. and imekuwa proven na life yake mali yako saa hizi yeah no what does your mom represent how do i put this she's just my mom that's the, that's the best way i can put it like she she has done everything that is possible i cannot ask anything more of her you get like i'm very protective of her like i can literally have done that before unampatia card yako account and ukatoe ndo yenye unataka unaona that's how much i trust her and if i come and she tells me and i think that's where peer your instinct yangu ya discernment ilitoka unaona you can introduce a girl to her and she will tell you this one is not good no and i don't know the thing with african mothers they always know no no most of the time they always know no so i trust her she's she's what can i say maybe she's two of the females that i trust the most with my life is the other female she's my best friend and it was lilian huyo mm. alikuja kwa life yangu she gave my life structure alikuja kanisaidi even to package she's a copywriter and a forex anafanya forex so through her ata nika nika discover it was last year yes last year mm. You know that person who walks in your life and just opens your eyes. Yeah. So if that person like you say I don't think this path is nice, you will trust. Mm-hmm. No, no. Yeah. So those are the two yeah. that of course other than my sisters and nini nini, yeah. but those are the two people in my life as far as female figures are concerned I can be you know. Yeah. And how is the relationship between your biological dad and your adopted dad? There's none. And I even encourage that more. Mm. There's none whatsoever. Mm. He's both of them are aware mm. of what he actually I had the other day. It's like I live in my own world I had the other day my stepdad is married not my stepdad my biological father mm. married and then you come and hear akona watoi Uh, kuna watoi and then unakuja unasikia like kuna new my brother and I it's like we have a very big land and mm. uh, iko uko western no. mm. like i can walk today and decide 
I'm going to build here, no one is going to ask. Mm. Nothing can happen on that land until my brother and I say something. Mm. But when unakujo naanza kujo unasikia stories zingine, oh kuna kijana alitokea nini nini nini. So you are like wondering, kwani how many of us are there? No. <laughs> Because sorry, no, it's okay. Because I, I was joking with a friend of mine the other day, and I was like, I think we need to have a family reunion of all of us. Unajua sisters wako ndiya hawa, musikujo kakatia dem, and then unakujo na pata di sister yako. You see, it is very awkward. You kunakujo and then una find something later and you start pigger sabuzako you are like okay 1 plus 1 is 2 so which means this and this will happen this so in conclusion she was a cheater during marriage uko home it's a representation uko western it's a representation of everything that was a failure in my life mm. i remember during i remember during covid tulienda nilipata job ya kwenda shoot ilikuwa burial and then these are sides too and then we decided kwenda uh seaport excuse seaport to co family ka how when you look on what this is family of the deceased kwenda seaport the way to seaport ni funyula naona huko kwa kinamudia wori huko ndio natoka huko ndio home nilipita hivi kwa barabara and there was this church it was i think a ck church I saw and it a flash the memories and nikaanza kupata seizures hapo nikiwa kwa gari. No. Sikushuka ama nini? And then this one the the, the client hawako anajua nini may happen. So I kept rabia to I think ni fatigue. So tukapita tukapita uh, my mom used to work to a missionary hospital inaitwa Nangina. So napita and there this memory both good and bad and all that but any time i'm in that ground or think of that ground i get seizure you were telling i'm sorry later in life sasa past to move on past the toxicity that my father you could may create the thought of my father it's when and this is very key i came to realize ni meset ilikuwa ni meset life yangu standards za life yangu na what i consider to be a project that a failure project a fail project rather what do i mean by that what i mean by that is that i used to be comfortable like my idea ilikuwa i'll try as much as i can not to be anything like my father no no but unconsciously what that statement does is that you've benchmarked yourself with him yet you considered him to be a failed project. No, no. Yeah. And it also holds you back from exactly. exploring who you really exactly. are. Exactly. So which means as long as umefanya kitu and imeonyesha hajaifanya you are comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I ended up realizing when you mesema it hold back from exploring who I am and forging my own path. I, it was an awakening call where you realize your whole life your path and your lukome forge the the compass and your lukona to mia ni compass and your lukona same maribika so kama uliko naenda east unajipata uko south why because ume uliko kifuata compass and imechapa so when i figured out who i am my purpose my calling my passion ah, that is when life yangu ilianza kuja in order mm-hmm. ah, and making peace with who i am mm-hmm. because i was in denial i had victim mentality like mm-hmm. victim mentality was ilikuwa something that ilikuwa ime take toll on me mm-hmm. the way i perceived myself body image and imposter syndrome and when was depression trigger depression ilikuja mara mbili hiyo mm. wakati the, the death ya wenye mm. those friends mm. but what has happened 
ile zile six weeks zenye nilikwambia hizo attack like last year nilienda the whole year without getting an attack and then suddenly zinakuja consistently for six weeks and so you cannot even stay in your house because when you look in your house everything you see it's a trigger nona and you feel like this is a toxic environment and constantly you, you are living in anxiety no and i think i saw a video yako a video an interview you did and he was talking about mental disorders and about anxiety and sleep disorders it was so bad that nilikuwa napata sleep paralysis no is on and you know the worst thing about sleep paralysis is umelala it's like you're semi sleep but you're hallucinating as well you can see someone ako hapa and you're trying to ask for help and they cannot hear you and you're sure they are there and then when you go and ask them bona nilikuwa ukiwa awake nilikuwa nakuita na huko unasikia au kuona kuja kunisaidia unaambiwa huyo mse ulikuwa unasema ako hapa alienda job 5 ngona so like mimi sasa in my case nilikuwa na naona napata attacks i'm choking i'm not breathing and so i'm kicking i'm kicking na there's nothing so how is it like you're here you ha- you're dealing with epilepsy and you're also having anxiety you're having hallucinations and you're depressed how is it like dealing with all those things as a whole i always say this and i'll say it again epilepsy let me begin with it the physical element of it is the easiest one to deal with because you break your hand after certain yes it hurts but after certain period inafanya nini in a heal but emotionally what it does to you and i believe before this interview i told you there are certain doors when you open and you're not ready to open those doors when you're not in a space to open those doors no it does a number on you that you cannot even begin to comprehend so for me number one, don't remember i've been battling anger issues so you're like sometimes it can get you and you're like really of all the places ungeza mm. choose it's like you're talking to epilepsy of all the places you could choose to get an attack you've chosen here like nikiwa gym unaona yeah. nikiwa una chapa zoezi uko sana kuambia strong i'll never forget that day umeekelea 80 kg hapa and then gym inakuambia strong umechota it's by the grace of god nilikachi nilikuwa nishapiga squats zangu and then nikaenda nimekaa chini and it was not at all because nilikuwa nimefinyilia mwili wangu sana because 80 kg was something that nilikuwa nafanya frequently so i'm like suddenly zikaanza kuja bila auras and that's why like it was tough for me because number one, at least i used to get a signal i'm coming and then nachukua mse na mwambia so nipeleke kwa keja this time round unajipata tu chini no and so like i become angry and i'm like i'm clicking and i'm mad and i'm like talking of all the places we get any part attack ni hapa no and then around people are looking you weird and all these stresses back to the first experience and the way we look on a grown na nini na nini so it's like a chain reaction no so e anger is not because of the attack in real it's because ya hii experience yote umekuwa ki experience tangu ujua kwa epilepsy the things you've gone through and then you think you've overcome and then tena inakuja inakwambia eh hey, chill mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like in my case the whole of last year sijapata attack mm-hmm. and for a moment i don't want to say you become careless but for a moment you become at ease mm-hmm. no no it's almost like you forget you have epilepsy mm-hmm. And then when you are adjusting to a life here yeah? a normal life mm-hmm. na kupatia uppercut mm-hmm. then now you have to walk every corner ukiangalia itakupata saa ngapi mm-hmm. because again epilepsy ukipata attack at least for me inakuja na sleep disorder mm-hmm. whereby you cannot like in my case nanipatanga usiku you are afraid to sleep because ya kupata attacks ngona and again nikilala mchana 
usingizi ni inani trigger i cannot sleep during the day because in a trigger is what we call is my clonic jacks i wake up and manini so it's like it's either you sleep at night where you are afraid of sleeping or sleep in chana then you get my choose choose your battle another thing i cannot use matatu none at least anymore they are full of triggers nini nini it's just that because of my passion i don't want to call it my naivety I'm not even supposed to be doing photography. It's what I was about to ask cuz the light triggers it. How yes. do you manage? Yes. Light flashlights and strobe lights are my main trigger. It's not even one. When you're saying number one, it is my main main trigger. No. So it's just that now the advantage is I have a team. No. Even if I showed you size in my company profile, I refer myself as creative, senior creative. is photographer the z and you know that's why when even before the twanza session i told the videographer that this this is the easiest part of the job what happens after this that is the most difficult part but i can only stare at the screen just for as much no can you imagine we've gone for at least i think an hour or so kwai interview no and now you need to go and sit down and get rid of the necessary part edit in a manner that it flow it takes a few days no no at least if you want to deliver kitu ya maana mimi nikikaa for more than 15 minutes kwa screen utaniokota chini no no and then because those software zenye zinatumiwa colors nini 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 so like i have a team and me na kuna direct i'm very good na interaction especially the ladies with posing and all that 90 97 clientele yangu ni madem so your interaction especially when now when you mark that with the psychoanalysis thing that i do and i've created an environment where someone feels safe like in your case akuja na kuambia fanya hivi fanya hivi and you're like you know me you know me so i prefer taking that that it's about just accepting no and taking that role and then in a pigwa picha wow hey wow thank you i don't know if there is something maybe to me acha and you feel like we should have tackled it but i feel like your story is so inspiring because you're able to overcome so much and create so much despite it and go on a realization journey where you found your purpose your passion you it's so I don't know it's such a beautiful story to hear. Thank you. Connecting and maybe we have not uh is there any covered I'm trying to look kama kama kuna kitu. Ah I think there's always next time if there's something in yeah. Sawalika yeah. we can do a part two, maybe. Yeah. And But, parting shot. You have a parting shot. Mm. I'll talk to people you know, it doesn't matter necessarily kama mm-hmm. ni epilepsy anything anyone with a form of disability no mm-hmm. first of all you have to embrace that you're different that's number one. Mm-hmm. you have to acknowledge who you are yeah. but for you to acknowledge who you are you need to accept malu metok and you need to like my therapist ananiambi actually that is my current assignment you have to accept the reality that you are in No, no. do not live in denial you see accept who you are accept where you come from and that's the only way you can move forward no you can never move forward not unless you know where you come from and where you are because the sooner you come to terms with those factors the the sooner you'll be able to achieve whatever goals that you may need so oh and this will come out harsh but it's the truth It doesn't matter what you're going through there's always someone who's going worse through worse than whatever you're dealing yeah. with yeah. so you can you have choices to make yeah. sit there and sob and cry or just accept that is life life is not fair yeah. and then just move forward i know it's a little love, bit harsh no, but, but it's true but it's that true that is the reality i love that i love that yeah. so that's it guys thank you so much for 
tuning in and that is why we do it. I think Evolve, that is why we do Evolve Africa because it's a space where we are constantly growing, we're constantly, like he said, we are losing the victim mentality, we are losing the all those behaviors that hold us back and we are constantly growing to be better people. So this episode is inspired by Lawrence, the guy behind the camera. He's the one who said, you know, we haven't thought about a person living with disability and mental health and I think that was such a great suggestion. Also, thank you so much for just coming and sharing your story. It's so inspiring. And, you know, it's, I thank you so much for coming. If you guys want your branding, your photography done, he's the guy. We'll share his email below. And if also you'd like to share your story with us, we'll share our email below. If you'd like Lawrence Magaya to do your this taking the videos and editing it is very good. We'll also share his email below. And thank you to Driftwood Spa and Baba Shop for allowing us to use this space. So that's it. Cheers.